mean, it's a passion. You know, I get to, I get to do it my way, and I get to, I, I've understood the brief of how dwarves look, how elves look, how orcs look. Because we make these at Weta Workshop, Weta Workshop is completely different from being on set. When you're on set, that's not Weta Workshop, it's a different different company, so people don't understand that. So I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to make these appliances and then go on to the actual set and be part of that as well. I work all the way through Comic Con, doing ears, transformations, delivering my services to uh, the Comic Con industry. This is uh, completely new for me, and now I've completely lost my voice. So it's quite very frustrating when it comes to Comic Con. You don't know where you're at. Anyone can just come from any angle. You don't know where the line is. So I basically is a guessing game. It's kind of fun. And you're doing this for what? About eight hours a day? I don't know how many hours a day it is. I just do it. I do it for as long as everyone at Weta Workshop is here. Oh, oh, here's another thing. It is so hot in this environment. Like, I come from a little town in the country and it's snowing right now. I live in the mountains in the South Island of Christchurch. And then I, I arrive off the aeroplane and I have to work under these conditions. And one lady told me today it was actually quite cold. It's been an amazing experience to be part of a movement that's so widely spread over America and um, Australia and New Zealand have their little Armageddon and it's like only the amount of this people here that go to them and so it's to turn up and there's like 90,000 people or so yeah. it's like overwhelming. I actually haven't gone for a walk anywhere in here. It's amazing that they come to me and get like, want to get that done. Well generally because I mean they know who you are it's like yeah I got my ears done by this famous guy. Well, I don't know if it's famous, because I don't, we don't really refer to it as famous. Um, the likes of Daniel, he would never refer uh, as being famous. And it's pretty amazing to think that keeps you humble. Yeah. Richard Taylor, our co-founder, would never say famous, you know. It's like this guy here who works for Hopperton and manages Hopperton. He comes across famous people all the time, but to him it's just a natural part of a, a way of, of, of an occupation. Because I do so much in terms of creating my own stuff, so I do fashion out of here, editorial, I don't just do movies, mm. I do underwater work and I work with some amazing photographers and other artists. Working with people like that keep you inspired and it keeps me moving into the world of creativity. If you're, in, if you're just stuck in one spot all the time, you're not going to grow, so hence I'm out here doing this, it's kind of inspiring for other people and I just want to let them know that they can all do it. You know, it doesn't have to be, for me, it's not about the dream, it's about the goal. You can dream a dream every day, but a goal is making it a mission to, to achieve. The more I've done this, the more confident and competent I've become. Yeah, so I just carry on doing it and people like it. This this seems to be a crowd puller and yeah, definitely. and. and Sometimes the reveal seems to be as important as the application. So it's kind of like that. I'm just fortunate that I work in an environment that accepts me. Yeah. yeah so I'm allowed to, to do this and be an, an ambassador uh, against, against uh, other authors and all. So it's amazing to be on a wall with people that I've admired for years. Oh, this is designed by a very... Um, one of our costumes, she used to be the head of Weta Workshop costuming. She hand sews all of her silver and gold and uh, she designs things like the Green Goblin of Spider-Man and, and also the Hobbit and all those sorts of things. And So this is my tribute to her, she has cancer. And so, yeah, I, I travel with her everywhere and I let her know. So it's kind of like my, to me it's a ring, yeah. Some people see it as a, it's actually a claw, but I just see it as, a, as actually a ring. Yeah, my mum's got lung cancer, so, you know, and I'm still travelling around. You still got to do it, you know? People don't really realise that you've got your own life to live, and it's all up and down, but you've still got to give your best, no matter what. That's just what I'm doing, you know? And I'm able to make somebody's dream come true by doing their hair and making their ears putting their ears on and just spending a little time with them and it's pretty, it's pretty uh, worth it and every, the more I do it the better it becomes. So, yeah. It wasn't always like that, you know, I, 
I didn't know how it was going to spin out half the time. So you don't take notes or, or percentages, you just kind of do it through my memory? Yeah, I do it by the way it fits and uh, the way I think it, the colour scheme should be. I don't think I'm the best, I just think I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not out for a competition. I'm just out to have a good time, you know. That's a good way to look at it. Because yeah. you're being recognised, really. Well, getting the what? I go back to New Zealand. No one cares. They just go, oh yeah, you do this. Oh yeah, you work at Weta. They don't really, you know, we're not really a... We're, they're more into rugby. We, we've got three national languages. Māori, te reo Māori, which is my culture, out of the native. And then we've got sign language and then English. It's got like a sign language. We've got, that's one of our national languages. Mm. So we've got three. I love them. I like, I like all of them. Yeah. And you, you do sign language too? I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with te reo Māori, yeah, pi Māori, yeah. I, and, and at times I only speak te reo Māori and not English. So what does that sound like? It sounds like ko war and tako ingo, no mangantaku ki te kainga, ko uh, taupiri te maunga, Ko Waikato to Iwi, Ko Waikato to Hawa, Ko Ngāti te Māoho te Ahapu. Ko, what did yeah, you just say? That's my family lineage, basically, where I'm from, uh, where my people are from, the river of where my family are, are of, uh, the place name. In my culture, the word for listen huh. is whakarongo mai. <laughs> whakarongo mai. That means listen in my language. Yeah. Nice. We have words like place names in New Zealand, Whakatani, yeah, yeah. It used to be a dying language in the days, but because it, that's what I'm saying about family lineage and where you're from, it's about sustaining it and being able to still, with children, even with my nephews and all, letting them grow up with that. It's still the history, it's still a blueprint, it's still a blueprint there before all of that, you know? And before, there, before all that, there was still a tribe people how far belonging. Back, how far back did your history go? Well our history goes all the way back to the beginning, really, you know, from the beginning of time. But really uh, New Zealand is a, a, a young nation and I can I can go back over 350 years. Yeah. I'm just looking at this guy here because this is I, I have to now remove the nose with alcohol. So he's suffering right now. He can't tell. No no it doesn't matter but he's actually you know, breathing this in. Are you know, are you know, you all right? But we're almost there, and this is pretty good removal. And we took the picture before. Oh, yeah? And then we can do an action. We'll do oh. a comparison afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I'll, as well, I'll try and tidy him up so he's looking it's all presentable. But he's, Shane's used to being the speaker as well, so it must be very different for him to be sitting back and. Hey? Yeah, for doing nothing. Because it honestly looks like you're taking off his physical nose, as though, as though you're, you're doing a surgery on it. Well, I'm glad I can talk and work, you know? There's some people that couldn't, they weren't able to do it, but... Okay, here we go. And um, some people get grossed out by it, but, you know, I look at this and I think, you all right? Yeah, so I am. <laughs> oh, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm looking at how intense you're looking at how I am. I'm just amazed by this. I, uh, I used to do theater, uh, that was one of my majors, uh, when I was doing computer science. And um, so uh, I never had something this complex, but I've been in this here before, so it was just amazing to see you this. It's amazing, Nick, it's coming off really well. And you're doing so well, Shane, I'm almost here. He's a bit, he's the star. Because this is what happened. I needed a model. I said, where's Shane? And then he was on lunch break. We had to call him. He was at his hotel rest team. And then he caught a taxi. Next minute he was there. Did you get a picture with Samuel Reese Jones? No. Oh. I wonder if he Oh, he came into it. Oh, was walking around in here. Yeah. He even came up here. Pick up, pick up. Now all of this is completely sticky. And you're using the alcohol to remove that? 
And now we probably will never do this again. Normally I'll go through with an oil now. So these are what the nose looks like. You would have felt one. Um, and the beard put on. That's normally what you do. How long does it take you to do this? Oh, this is about an hour and a half. But the nose is about 10 minutes. It feels like a very surreal sort of uh, skin. See, this is not too bad now, eh? Because it's not alcohol, that's why. So this is an oil, it just releases everything. These, um, they, they look like little veins. How do they get that in there? It's cool, that's the material which you... If I say it wrong, it's going to sound wrong. But it's called flocking. Flocking? F-L-O-C-K. And it's a, you know, it's a red sort of um, pigment to it. It gives it more of a skin and yeah, tone. Yeah, it looks, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you look very close, it's very difficult to tell that it's not a vein, like a capillary. But they do look so real long when they're, when they're applied properly. See, I'm see you. Even though it looks as though I've taken a lot of the product off, there's still a lot of product on there. And all of this, you can still stick a piece of paper to it and it'll stick like a prosthetic. Yeah, it's a silicon, a silicon adhesive, the same material. Yeah, I can't even see it from here. And the eyebrows, well, they still got, you know, adhesive in it. And, and that's why taking all, all this care it takes a while to get it right and to take it off. And so you're usually doing, you're doing, or I guess the fine time, you're talking about almost, what, two hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I've had a good chat. And a good sort of like coming down and after being such in the hype of everything, I'm able to just chill, chill out now. So what is that on the brush? Oh, this is just oil, this part. This one. And or, uh, earlier to take this off, isopropyl. Yeah. Is this not really bad? Uh, yeah, that's why I was saying he's a little bit of negative to begin with. But we've got most of the soft part, there's a lot of it still there. And it's kind of like a second skin, really, just pulling it off. So does, does the patient that's on your face at all, or can you, can you, does your skin, is it able to breathe? Yeah, it was fine. It was fine all day. The nose felt a little bit heavier than what I'm used to. And it was weird having it in my line of sight. But it was, it was comfortable. Oh, so you had like one eye? Yeah, see, I can see this. Oh, I, I, yeah, I always have to go in and you just close your eyes and hold your breath just again. And if I can see that sort of um, lift, just hit it, lift, and I know I'm taking some of that away, like that. I know, so you got to look for that. I suppose it's just those fine details without a a aggravating the skin. Uh, our teacher, she had us take oil and salt. Yeah, yeah. Oil. I mean, this is oil, but yeah, salt. I mean, that's giving you a good cleanse, that's for sure. But no, there's so much, but a hot shower will be so good to be able to do that. Because I'll get you. Turn around. It's all this. See how you got that skin? It's all of that last bits. This is the part they never show. You never yeah. you really see it going on. You never get to see it come on. Yeah, well, people don't really realize that. That's what you have to deal with at the end. All, all the actors did too. How do you keep your skin? Like, for me, the issue I used to hate about it is that I always freak out afterwards. Uh, he's never had, had this done before, have you? No, this is the first time. Yeah, because normally when he dresses up, it will just be that party dress where you know you just pull a beard over the top, then. A synthetic wig, and when you get hot, take it off. But that's yeah. why I was excited. This is always something I wanted to do: is have the full prosthetic treatment. So, cool. And now he did, but he won't be doing it in a hurry.